his first briefing before the UN Security Council, Grandberg calls on Houthis to stop their offensive in Ma'arib. Houthi militia targets Mecha port with missiles and drones in a flagrant violation of the Stockholm Agreement. Government forces defend Houthi rebel attacks in Ma'arib and inflict heavy losses among them. Welcome to Yemen Today TV, this is the English News with me, Roshan Fouad. Hans Gromberg addressed the UN Security Council in his first briefing as a special envoy to Yemen. The Swedish diplomat called on Houthi rebels to immediately stop their offensive attacks in Ma'arib that aggravated the humanitarian conditions in the city. Also, Gromberg stressed resumption of the political process would be hard. Efforts will continue to bring all parties to the negotiation table under the supervision of the United Nations, Granberg added. The Swedish Foreign Minister Ann Lind stressed on the need for a sustainable peace in Yemen. Ann Lind confirmed the need of diplomatic, humanitarian and development process to reach peace. During a meeting with the Yemeni Foreign Minister, the Swedish diplomat insisted on the need of a strong women role to reach what she indicated as political process. Yesterday, Hans Gramberg gave his first briefing to the International Security Council about the situation in Yemen. This report will attempt to shed light on the key issues tackled by the UN Special Envoy. Special Envoy of the Secretary General for Yemen briefed the Security Council for the first time since he took up his position four days ago, recalling he began working in the country more than a decade ago. That experience now makes him painfully aware of the complexities of the conflict, which are unfortunately only multiplying as fighting drags on. I am therefore under no illusions about the difficulty of the task handed to me by this council, he said. Enabling a resumption of peaceful, inclusive, orderly and Yemeni-led political transition process that meets the legitimate demands and aspirations of the country's people as mandated by the council will not be easy. There are no quick wins, he said, describing the vast destruction and suffering wrought by the current conflict. He said that the epicenter of the military confrontation has shifted over time with combatants taking turns on the offensive. Since early 2020, the focus has been on the sustained offensive by Houthis on Ma'rib Governorate, in which thousands of Yemenis have lost their lives or been displaced. The port city of Hodeida continues to experience a noticeable decline in ceasefire violations, while hostilities in the southern districts of the government are of particular concern. The United Nations mission to support the Hodeida Agreement, or UNMAHA, continues its vital work, including to urge the parties to come together through joint dialogue to define a sustained way forward. Meanwhile, he said the situation in the southern governorates, where there have been regular flare-ups of violence, is also deeply worrying. Basic services and the economy have deteriorated dramatically and the implementation of the Riyadh Agreement continues to face challenges. He voiced additional concern that the conflict in Yemen is spilling over its border, threatening regional security and international waterways, and especially about the targeting of civilians and civilian infrastructure inside Saudi Arabia. Calling for an immediate end to all violence, Grundberg said it's vital the external actors also encourage de-escalation and support a Yemeni-led political settlement. Warning that economic warfare is also sowing long-term devastation, Grundberg said Yemenis across the country live with severe limitations on their freedom of movement. The United Nations' position on that matter remains unchanged. The freedom of movement of people and goods in and out, as well as throughout the country, must be guaranteed. Roads must be reopened and Sana'a Airport needs to open for commercial traffic. Grandberg said also he would launch early consultations with Yemeni, regional and international actors with a trip to Saudi Arabia planned soon. He also laid out plans to meet with Houthi leadership 
Trib and other political actors throughout Yemen and its neighboring countries. In the end, although most Yemenis have had disappointment over the performance of former UN special envoys in terms of achieving peace, some still believe Grundberg can make a difference. Perhaps because the very fact of Sweden itself reminds them of the Stockholm Agreement, the only tangible breakthrough of UN-led peace efforts since the start. Yet, whether Sweden would be a blessing or a curse for Yemenis, only days can tell. This morning and weeks after it resumed operating, the Houthi militia targeted Mecha commercial seaport with missiles and drones. According to the Joint Forces Military Media, the militia targeted the infrastructure of the port with four missiles and three drones. The attack came minutes after a government delegation from the Ministry of Transport visited the port to officially launch operations. The port of Mecha is considered one of the oldest ports in the Arabian Peninsula and the Gulf, with a strategic location near the International Strait of Bab el Mandeb. Unfortunately, after we inaugurated the reopening of the port a few weeks ago, in the presence of the representative of the United Nations for Humanitarian Affairs, accompanied by the government delegation, where everyone was full of optimism, we were surprised by the Houthi bombing of the port and the targeting of the repaired infrastructure. This is a war crime and a violation of human rights. From here, we call on the United Nations High Commission for Humanitarian Affairs, international organizations and the Arab neighboring countries that the port of Mecha is an international port that is being targeted today for the purpose of destroying its infrastructure. The condemnation must be clear. Also, the legitimate government should take immediate actions. Employees in Al Mecha port affected by the outrageous healthy attack on the port. They stopped working fearing another attack that could cost them their lives. We came to work in the port, but the Houthi militia bombed the port, destroying the infrastructure and disrupted our work. We came here to work, and while we were transporting goods, we were surprised by drones hitting the port, and now the work has totally stopped. The workers and they were transporting oil goods as the port was targeted by the drones. The infrastructure was destroyed and now stopped working out of fear. Two weeks passed since the reopening of the port, as if the militia learned about the port reopening and they targeted it with several drones, which caused the work to stop. Government forces backed by resistance thwarted a healthy attack in the Al-Majjah front west of the city. Military sources said that confrontations occurred in Al-Majjah front after a healthy attack. Government forces and the resistance managed to confront the attack and inflict heavy losses on the healthy militia. Also, the government forces carried out an ambush on Al-Majjah front, killing 18 healthy members. Despite the unusual recent healthy escalation in different battlefronts, their losses only during the past two months are huge. This report has more details on that story. Houthi militia is having their worst days in Yemen. Besides being battled and deterred in different fronts in Yemen's hotspots, the rebels are losing lives and equipment among their lines. Media sources outlined that the militia buried 136 of their cadres during the first week of September. Sources said also that those Houthis were killed in the flashpoints of Ma'rib and al hudaydah There were 93 commanders out of those documented funerals. Most of those killed were from the capital Sana'a. Out of the 136 who were buried, there were 67 in Sana'a alone. The new numbers added to the toll of losses that have been inflicted on the rebels. Media sources reported earlier that the Houthi militia buried 246 of their militants during August. The number of 137 Houthis commanders were among those who were buried during August in Sana'a. The Houthi new reported losses piled up during the last couple of days, with more than 60 members of the rebels killed in Marib frontiers when the militia reinforcements and mobilizations to Marib were forced back by the government forces and coalition air raids. In west of Yemen and on the coastlines of the Red Sea, 
Houthi rebels are renewing violating the fragile ceasefire in the city. They continue to shell populated houses and destroy public and civilian properties. However, faced by strong resistance from the part of the joint forces, Houthis are spotted and pushed back from these frontiers, lifting behind losses in lives and equipments. To conclude, Houthi rebels' losses in different battlefields are considerable. Despite this, Yemenis still hope that war stops and that peace prevails to end their ongoing suffering. Coming next. Heis and New School Year for Students Shattered by the War Atrocities. Welcome back. Access to education is a basic right for every child. However, this is not the case in Yemen since Houthis controlled the capital Sana'a. Thousands of children have been denied that basic right. The following report attempts to explore the negative impact of war on children education. Six years on, Yemeni children's education has become one of the greatest casualties of Yemen's devastating and ongoing conflict. According to a new report published by UNICEF today, over 2 million school-age girls and boys are now out of school as poverty, conflict and lack of opportunities disrupt their education. This is double the number of out-of-school children in 2015 when the conflict started. Also, access to quality education is a basic right for every child, including girls, displaced children and those with disabilities. Sir Philip Duhamel, UNICEF representative to Yemen, said that the conflict has a staggering impact on every aspect of children's lives. Yet, access to education provides a sense of normalcy for children in even the most desperate contexts and protects them from multiple forms of exploitation. Keeping children in school is critical for their own future and the future of Yemen. The report highlights that when children are not in school, the consequences are dire for both their present and their future. Girls are being forced into early marriage, where they remain trapped in a cycle of poverty and unfulfilled potential. Boys and girls are more vulnerable to being coerced into child labor or recruited into the fighting. More than 3,600 children in Yemen were recruited by Houthi militia in the past six years. To make matters worse, two-thirds of teachers in Yemen, over 170,000 teachers in total, haven't received a regular salary for more than four years because of the conflict and the geopolitical divides. This puts around 4 million additional children at risk of disrupted education or dropping out as unpaid teachers quit teaching to find other ways of providing for their families. Children who do not finish their education are trapped in a self-perpetuating cycle of poverty. If out-of-school children or those who have dropped out recently are not properly supported, they may never return to school. The combined effects of the prolonged conflict and the latest assault on education by Houthi rebels and COVID-19 pandemic will have devastating and long-lasting effects on the learning, as well as the mental and the physical well-being of children and adolescents in Yemen. In the report, UNICEF calls for all stakeholders in Yemen to uphold children's right to education and work together to achieve lasting and inclusive peace. This includes stopping attacks on schools, ensuring teachers get a regular income so that children can continue to learn and grow, and for international donors to support education programs with long-term funding. With the beginning of the new school year, schools in Heist received 5,200 students. Students enroll in these schools despite healthy crimes against education facilities in the city. This report has more details on the story. 
in the new school year, hundreds of students in Hudaydah head to their damaged schools due to the Houthi outrageous bombing. These old schools need restoring. Classes are overcrowded with students and lack basic equipment. The number of students in high schools is around 5,200. There are about 100 teachers who are absent due to the war. Others have been forced to be displaced. There are females volunteer teachers and the number is approximately 132. They work to cover the deficit to continue the education crisis. Schools need to be restored and furnished to facilitate education crisis. We hope organizations will intervene quickly to end these problems in the liberated areas. These students, with their giant efforts, create hope for education, despite the continuous bombing of the city by the Houthis. The militias deprived people from education. Parents are forced to move and transfer their children to heights so they can continue their education. I am one of the displaced from Wadi Nakhla. My family and I are registered as IDPS in Hais district. I went to Hais so my children can follow their education. I am displaced and expelled from the village because of the Houthis who have destroyed the education in my country. They turn school into military parks. They displaced children and took the right to education. Most of the students here come from displaced families. Families do not have enough money to buy stationery for their children, especially amid high prices. We call on the local authorities and international organizations to look at these students who are highly motivated to learn. In the center of Hayes City, nine schools are operating, while around 36 other schools were converted into barracks for the rebels. The militia's assaults on schools do not end there, as they poopy trap and detonate a large number of schools. Now, returning to home schools is a dream for many students in Tehama, especially those near fire lines. We go to school every day. Once the ceiling of the classroom fell on us, and now we study under the light and heat of the sun. Classrooms are crowded with more than half of the students sitting on the floor. We want our school back. According to UN reports, around 2,000 schools and educational centers are totally destroyed due to war. Meanwhile, some schools are still used by the militia as military barracks. This has added to the burdens of the education sector. In Aden, popular discontent has increased over the constant and long power cuts after the gradual halt of electric stations due to shortage of fuel. Despite high temperatures, angry citizens set tires on the streets and blocked the road in front of vehicles, mainly in Al Mansura and Khormaksar districts. Citizens in Aden suffer deterioration of basic services and high prices due to the collapse of the national currency. In Taiz, a meeting to discuss uh, arrangements for COVID-19 vaccination process held yesterday. The meeting addressed distributing mechanisms for the vaccine to 17 directorates in the governorate. This meeting comes before launching a vaccination campaign against the pandemic to be started next Tuesday and will last for 30 days. The campaign targets citizens registered through the electronic platform of the Ministry of Public Health and Population. The National Committee Against Coronavirus announced the registration of 52 new cases of the COVID-19 pandemic in six governorates. Committee officials said on Twitter that 22 cases were recorded in Hadramaut, 7 in Ta'iz, 7 in Al-Bayda, 7 in Ma'rib, 6 in Aden, and 3 in Hudayda. Also, 8 deaths were recorded, plus 47 recovered cases. With the current updates, the total confirmed cases are 1,358, including 1,569 deaths and 5,209 cases of recovery. Here is a reminder of the main headlines. In his first briefing before the UN Security Council, Granberg calls on Houthis to stop their offensive in Ma'arib. How to militia targets Mecha port with missiles and drones in a flagrant violation of the Stockholm Agreement. 
government forces defend how three rebels attacks in Ma'rib and inflict heavy losses among them. This is the end of the news. It was Roshan Fouet. Thank you for watching.